Hey fellow designers, it's Karen of Karen Gwen Customs. Welcome back to another bridesmaid dressmaking vlog. This is week two and today is Monday. As you can see, I'm still cutting out skirt pattern pieces. For everyone that is new to the channel, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend that may be interested in my content. Be sure to click that notification bell and change it from personalized to all so you get notified every time I upload one of these videos. Also, be sure to join my sewing pattern group on Facebook, KGC Sewing Patterns, and follow me on Instagram at KGC Sewing Patterns. Stay tuned to see how week two of dressmaking went for me. This is what I'm doing, cutting out skirts and watching Love & Hip Hop to make the time go by. Not that it needs to go by any faster than it already is. I want to show you guys something real quick before I forget. Okay, so if y'all look down there, you can see that I have my pattern piece like backwards. Um, that's the back skirt pattern piece, so it doesn't matter so because it's two identical symmetrical pieces. But um, as you can see, I had already like cut out um, pattern pieces from that other side, but I was able to fit the uh, waist to knee part of the pattern up there um without just like discarding all that fabric so um i went ahead and just like overlapped if you will um if you are able to do that without confusing yourself by all means do and if not you'll just have those extra scraps you can see i have extra scraps back there those are gonna be um i'm gonna use those to cut out bodice pieces if i can fit them but I'm thinking with this overlapping, I might save even more fabric and be able to make like an extra dress or something. Just wanted to mention that. All right, so I just finished cutting out skirt number six. It is 1 a.m. and I'm sleepy, so I'm going to stop and go take a shower and get ready for bed. And um, I have to get up at 6.30 um, to take my daughter to school. So this is my stopping point because uh, I want to make sure I give myself a few minutes before um, bed to just decompress and relax and then I'm gonna catch my little four and a half ish hours of sleep and get back to it tomorrow. Okay, so it's Tuesday night. It's like 6.30 in the evening. I just came back from a little decompression uh, ride in my car. I just went and got a caramel frappe and I took my little journal and my self-help book that I'm reading right now with me and just spent a little bit of time doing like some journaling and self-reflecting. And so now I feel like refreshed and ready to tackle my sewing evening. Um, I have a total of six skirt bottoms cut out and tonight I really 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 want to finish the rest of them I've been averaging like one hour per skirt bottom which was I, I don't know if that's normal but for me it feels like it's ridiculously slow um, so I'm gonna try to speed it up I'm gonna see if I can get two cut out per hour tonight because I really want to be done with that part so I can move on to the next thing and um, yeah that's pretty much it I'm gonna get started I'll let you guys know um, at the end of the night how it goes and before I get started I'm going to fill in my little um, calendar dry erase calendar um, just because I like barely ever fill it out and I'm really trying to get more organized so yeah I'm gonna do that really quickly and then I'll get started with cutting out the um, next set of skirts It's 8.35, it's been about two hours and I was able to cut out three more skirts. So right now I have a total of nine cut out. All of these back here are the nine bridesmaid dresses and then I have the two uh, matron of honor dresses and the one maid of honor dress. The last three dresses that I just mentioned are gonna be burgundy. So I'm done with cutting out my black fabric. And let me show you guys how much I have left cause I obviously ordered like way too much. Um, of course, I'm going to need a decent amount for the bodice and everything um, and the straps because some of them are going to have straps. But look how much fabric is left. I'm definitely going to have and I think I paid like 350 or so dollars for all that fabric it was 36 yards. Um, 
I'm definitely going to have a lot left over to like make other dresses. So I'm happy about that because um, I definitely still made a profit um, and I got them at kind of like a discount or I got the yardage at kind of a discount because I ordered so much of it. But anyways, yeah, I'm done with all the black dresses and now I'm going to cut out the three uh, burgundy dresses, the bottoms. This is my burgundy fabric. I got this from Fabriktopia and I got 12 yards. Um, they have it labeled as spandex, but it might be spandex, might be mill skin, whatever. But this is the color that the two matrons and the one maid of honor dress are going to be. I forgot that I even bought the zippers. I just found them in the bag with the burgundy fabric. So I'm happy about that because that's one less little last minute detail that I'll have to remember. I ended up time lapsing myself to cut out the burgundy skirts for TikTok. Um, time lapsing yourself doing sewing projects is a really good way to get easy content. And I find that it helps me to get more work done because I'm not constantly stopping to look at my phone or getting distracted by notifications, etc. All right, it's 9.40 and I just finished cutting out um, three skirt back pairs for the burgundy as well as one um, front set. So I have two front sets left to go. It's 12.47. I finished the remaining six skirts that I had to cut out tonight. Still going to bed at the time. I usually try to go. Um, today, I got through twice as many skirts as I did yesterday in the same amount of time. What did I do differently? I wasn't playing on my phone. I wasn't texting. Um, the stuff that I decided to like watch was stuff I didn't really have to watch. I could just listen to it. Um, listen to a couple YouTube videos. Well, more than a couple in between seven o'clock and 1 a.m. It's like 1245 now. So tomorrow when I get back to it, um, I'm going to be <sighs> cutting out the patterns for the tops. And I think I'm going to trace the top pattern. Here's the top pattern piece right here. A lot of them I'm going to need to make longer um, because this is for a 16 inch shoulder to waist length. And I have a lot of people that have um, either longer or shorter torsos. So I'm probably just going to trace them because they're so small. It's not going to take long anyways. Um, but yeah, that's the next step. And tomorrow is Wednesday. All right, it's Wednesday morning, and um, I'm just going to take a few minutes to respond to some emails. I have some inquiries that I haven't responded to about like prom and stuff. And then I have um, one client who made a consultation deposit last night um, to get a prom dress made. So I have to schedule with them. And then um, I also have a couple people who had... Um, had trouble with downloading their pattern, so I have to email them. So yeah, I'm just gonna spend a few minutes taking care of those things. Was it the big blow hard? It was me? Well then, I guess I better clean it up. It's only fair. So, get ready for the 10 second tidy. Ready, set, go! <laughs> It's Thursday night at 8.30 <laughs> and I'm just getting started. I had a lot going on today. I went to the eye doctor this morning and I got an injection because I have a condition. So I have to get injections every few months um, to preserve the vision in this eye. Um, and then I had work and then I took a nap because I was exhausted. And then I journaled and now it's time to work on my craft so um tonight I'm gonna be making the patterns for the um bodices um and I have a master pattern already but I'm gonna be customizing it because people have different lengths of torsos um some people might be uh, a different size in the bust than they are in the waist so I'm gonna be customizing it um so I'm gonna show you guys how that process goes 
All right, so for this part of the process, we're gonna be using easel paper. Um, I either got this from Michaels or Amazon, probably Michaels, um, but you can find it at either of those places. It's literally just like um, art paper that you know you paint on in school. And I use this for tracing paper to trace my patterns so that I don't have to cut a new pattern every single time. Um, this is the first <clears throat> set of measurements that we're going to be working with. As you can see, um, I've already identified the person's uh, bust and waist measurements. So their bust is between a medium and a large, but closer to a large. Their waist is between a small and a medium, but closer to a medium. And their shoulder to waist length is 16 inches. So um, the pattern shoulder to waist length is also 16 inches. So I will not be making any adjustments to the length of this pattern but I will be um, I will be adjusting it's not going to only be one size it's going to be closer to a large in the bus and closer to a medium in the waist okay so what we're going to do is take our paper and lay the pattern piece underneath it The paper is thin enough that you can kind of see through it. And you know, you guys know I use my quilting table, so I like the fact that I'm able to see the grids and stuff. It's easy to identify like when I'm adding inches and whatnot. So I'm going to trace the inner edges of this. Also remember, this dress is straight across at the top. So we don't need to do the sweetheart little dip thing. So I'm going to draw a straight line. There's the sweetheart. I'm drawing just a straight line. The waist is between a small and a medium, but closer to a medium. Extra small, small, medium. So that's where the waist would be. And then the bust, which is right here, is between a medium and a large, extra small, small, medium, large, closer to a large, which is a very short distance anyway, so there's not much in between space. So I'm just going to draw the line and we're going straight across. straight across and then I'm going to draw a line down to here and I should have been using a ruler for this part just to make sure it's straight as possible um, and then I'm going to write her name on it bodice black and this is actually the center. And I just write the same little notes that I had there. And so that piece is done. And then the other piece is the side. Do the same thing start over here and trace and the waist is extra small small medium close to a medium and then the bust which is up here is close to large, extra small, small, medium, large. So for the bus, there's also like an under bus line. So I'm 
I just follow the way it looks. And then once I reach under bust, then I draw a straight line from waist to under bust. And then the rest of this kind of follows the same pattern. I know this is a little sloppy, but um, I'm using a permanent marker so I can't erase it. It's just easier for me to use this kind of marker so that you guys can see it on camera. All right, so that's those two pieces. And then we also got the back piece. Sometimes I, instead of like cutting out everything one by one, I'll just literally keep rolling my um, paper and then I'll just cut everything out at once. And this is the center pack. Too close. Okay, so the waist is closer to a medium. Extra small, small, medium. And the bust is closer to a large. So bust line is right here, extra small, small, medium, large. So that's where our bust line is going to be. You're just going to draw a straight line down to the waist. And then there. And then this is just literally a straight line across. And again, just going to write her name. You want to track whose pattern belongs to who. Black, um, we're going to be cutting four of these. Um, this we're going to cut two, and then this one we're going to cut four. So that's that. And then I'm going to hang this dress back up and move on to the next. So this is um, almost all of the uh, bodice patterns for the black dresses, for the bridesmaid dresses. I actually literally ran out of paper like right before I did the uh, the back piece for this last girl. Um, but I might end up just like cutting that one or I'll trace it like on a regular piece of paper or something. But I think what I'm going to do now is cut out all of the center bodice pieces because they only require two. And then um, everything else I'll leave attached to the paper because then I can just like lay it down on the fabric and cut the paper out with the fabric at the same time, if that makes sense. The pattern paper is actually really nostalgic for me because when I first started selling patterns, the very first pattern that I released, which was the mermaid gown pattern, I had not uh, yet like taught myself how to do um, like digitized patterns. And so I literally like drew the patterns and I would trace them 
onto pattern paper one by one every time someone would order it. I didn't have my patterns on Etsy. I was selling like on Facebook Messenger by Cash App. And so um, I think I sold like 70 mermaid gown patterns or it was either 70 patterns period between the mermaid gown, the unitard and something else. Or that might've been the only two that I did that like were on like hand-drawn pattern paper. But yeah, it used to be a lot of work. Um, and now it's been simplified, but you know, every now and then I have a situation where I need pattern paper and it comes in handy just like it used to. So I'm done um, cutting out all the like center pieces for the black dress bodices and then the rest of them I'm just going to lay them on top of the fabric and cut it out with the fabric as I go. Um, so I did all that. Tomorrow hopefully I'll be able to cut out all the fabric maybe even start sewing some together but I also have to make circle skirt templates so we'll see. Um, but I'm going to go and get some rest. Okay, excuse my extremely dirty serger. Um, I just had changed my blades because my machine was no longer cutting fabric. So I thought my blades were dull. Um, and from what I'm looking at, it looks like the two blades are supposed to be closer together. And that's why it's not cutting. I don't know why they're not touching, but I think they're supposed to be. So I'm about to, I got, I took all this stuff off and I'm about to unscrew, um, these put them back on and see if i can get them to like touch each other like they're supposed to once i get this figured out i'll do another more detailed video about how you can change your serger blades okay it looks like literally all i had to do was loosen the screws and then just hold the blade in place as i screwed in so that it does touch um i'll let you guys know how it works okay i think i fixed it my blades are touching i'm about to run a piece of fabric through here just to make sure i fixed it i mean literally is there anything i can't do <laughs> okay so the reason i was so invested in getting my serger together and ready to use is because i plan on since i have a very limited amount of time to get all this done i'm going to actually skip using the sewing machine on some parts like where i sew the uh, side seams together for the skirts i'm going to use my serger for that because it's faster and um, there's really nothing wrong with doing that. You just have to make sure that you are using four threads. When you use three threads on your serger, you're using less material, but you're also making less um, secure stitches. Now, when you use all four threads on your serger, you end up with something like this. So there's the inside seam and here is what it looks like on the outside and you can see i'm tugging stretching stretching and it is very secure it is going to withstand the tension of these big hips and big butts that are going to be in these bridesmaid dresses and so yeah i'm going to be using the serger to sew down the side seams of my skirts um and maybe um some parts of the bodices as well, uh, but I'll see when I get to that part. But yeah, if you use four threads, it's totally fine to skip sewing and just completely use the serger. Okay, so I decided before I do the side seams, I'm going to sew the splits together um, and hem them. I don't have the kind of thread that I wanna use. I only have serger thread. I don't really like sewing with that on my sewing machine, but I'm gonna get started and see how it works. Sometimes the thread breaks easily because it's so thin. Okay, so you guys know I'm a stickler for like complicated math. The way I determine how long to do the split, by default, I do 14 inches. If they want their split higher or lower when they come in to do their fitting, I can change it. But I think 14 inches is like safe. Um, they're going to be walking, they're going to be dancing. They might have to like sit down at some point in front of an audience and you don't want it to be like way too short to the point that it's like uncomfortable or inappropriate. Um, but aside from doing that uh, default 14 inch measurement, what I do is subtract hip to floor minus split to floor. The split to floor is wherever the client pointed when um, 
I asked them how high they wanted their, you know, legs to show. So 34.5 minus 30, that's 4.5. And then I add the distance from waist to hip, which is six inches. So when I add six plus 4.5, I get 10 and a half. You're gonna add another half an inch for that waist seam allowance. So that gives me 11. And that's still three inches shorter than my default. And this lady is an inch taller than me. So I'm not gonna go with this. If she wants to make it shorter when she comes in for her fitting, we can, um, cause you know, it might look different when she see it in person, but I'm gonna go with 14 inches um, for the most part and just see how it turns out. So what I'm gonna be doing is pinning the, the two front skirts together at the split and I'm going to sew them together with a 14 inch length. And then I'm going to sew the side seams of the skirts with my serger. Um, but before I do that, after I sew the splits, I'm going to go ahead and hem the splits as well. So I've had an extremely stressful start to my weekend. I haven't gotten any work done. I decided that I wanted to start by getting my serger uh, together. I did that successfully. The serger is in working order. And then I was starting to sew on my domestic machine and I realized I still have this industrial machine over here that I have not used. I mean, I've used it a little bit, but every time I use it, I get through a certain amount of work and then something happens. The, the needle gets stuck, the needle starts hitting the bobbin, the thread gets bunched, like something goes wrong. And so my last bridal project that I was doing, I was like, you know, I'm gonna leave this machine alone because obviously I need time to get comfortable with it and figure out how it works and stuff. And um, the whole summer has gone by and I just, I haven't taken the time to do that. And I decided um, last night that I wanted to, please turn it down decided last night that I wanted to figure out um, how to get it together so that I could use it for this bridal project because I pay all this money for it and it's just sitting here and I've spent the last 24 hours troubleshooting this machine taking out screws putting screws back in adjusting things and I, it still doesn't work so on Monday I'm gonna call a sewing machine repair shop um, and try to get someone to come out and just show me like what's wrong with it and how to use it. Um, I honestly, I don't think I've done anything wrong. Um, I, I just don't understand what the problem is and I, I'm just very frustrated and a whole day has gone by and I haven't gotten, um, any closer to my goal of finishing these dresses. Um, I kept thinking with all the work I had put in, I might as well keep going because at some point it's going to start working. Um, but no, I, it's, it's, it's not giving. So I'm going to have to call, um, a repairman and get some help. Um, or possibly I'm going to also call the manufacturer. I feel like crying, but I'm not going to show y'all cause you're going to think I'm crazy, but I do be crying when my projects don't go right. Comment below if you can relate. Okay, so that little time lapse that you just saw was an hour of work for me and I was able to um, sew together uh, the splits, hem the splits, and um, serge together the side seams for three skirts. So I was able to get through three skirts in one hour. Okay, so it's never the best idea to sew when you're tired and that's what I've been doing. It's uh, a little bit after midnight and as you can see, I made my way all the way through all of these skirts, the black ones. Um, and I guess it was like four and a half hours, but um, I took longer than I needed to. Remember the first three I got through in only one hour. So I should have been able to do all this in, in three hours. Um, I took some breaks. I had dinner, whatever. Um, but um, I got to the last skirt and when I got ready to pin, I realized that my 
um, split seam has like a hip to it. And so as you can see, I this side has a hip and this doesn't. So I actually sewed my skirt together backwards. And so I'm gonna have to pick, not only pick the split out, but I also hemmed the entire split as well. So I'm going to have to seam rip all of that. And the lazy part of me says to just cut out another skirt, two more skirt pieces, because I have a lot of fabric. So do I like waste the money and just cut out two more? I think I'm probably going to do that. Um, and I also think that I'm tired and I should stop for today. It's 1.30 a.m. I decided to not be lazy. I went ahead and picked out the incorrect stitches from the skirt that I sewed together wrong and I fixed it. So now all nine of the black bridesmaid dresses have been sewn together from waist to floor. The only thing that's missing is the hem on the bottom. Um... So they're ready to have tops attached. And then the burgundy ones I'm gonna do tomorrow because I don't have uh, thread cones, uh, serger thread cones in burgundy. So I'm gonna go to the store tomorrow and get some so I can knock these last three out. Um, and also tomorrow I'm gonna be cutting out the bodices and the boning that goes in the bodice pieces. I plan on sleeping in tomorrow. So I'm watching Power before I go to bed. The next day I cut out the bodice pieces in this first clip I'm cutting out the back pieces and the side pieces and I have the fabric folded over three times so that I'm cutting out four pieces at a time and then this, this next clip I'm cutting out the center pieces and I have the fabric folded over twice so that I'm getting two pieces at a time. I just pulled up to Fabriktopia's new location. You can barely see the sign because it's super super windy outside in Houston today um, but I'm about to walk in and check out what they have. It's near the last location they had. It's literally at the corner of Richmond and Fondra now. Okay, I spent $139.50. I got six yards of this silver satin. I think this was uh, crepe satin. I love, love, love crepe satin. And then I got um, three and a half yards of this um, nude spandex and then four yards of this uh, nude uh, mesh. Well, it's really called stretch tool, but it's very strong. Like I never have problems with it. I was very nervous about the um, color of the spandex. <laughs> because my bride's skin is a little bit lighter than mine. I really wanted it to be a good match. I actually asked uh, one of the employees in there. Uh, he was a Hispanic guy. His skin is lighter than mine and I felt like her skin is somewhere between mine and his. So I asked him to hold the spandex up to his arm and it looks like a good match. So I think we're gonna be good. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all how I pin the pieces together. So these are the side bodice panels. And so you should have four. And then these are the center bodice panels and you should have two of these. So you're just gonna take your center panel and lay it right side up. So these are the shiny sides. And then you're gonna take your side panel and lay it shiny side down. Shiny side down. Shiny side down. Shiny side down. Okay, and once you have it like that, they're gonna be connected like this, okay? So I'm pinning these edges together, right sides together.
and I'm gonna serge this using about a half inch seam allowance. The edges of the side panels are a little bit curved. So just take your time pinning and use as many pins as you need to make sure you have them lined up properly. And once you get to the bottom, they should be the same length. There shouldn't be like any one piece is longer than the other one. If it is, you need to adjust your pins. So that's that one side. And now pin the other side. And once these pieces are joined together, they're making a curve, the curve that goes around the bust area. So that's why your side panels are rounded. I'm just adjusting my pins very slightly and I think we are good. And you're gonna do the same thing with the other set. So you'll end up having two sets, one will be your lining and one will be your main or outer fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this one and then I'm going to um, be surging them. So I'll surge this and surge this. And then after that, um, I'll need to cut the boning so that I can insert the boning. Okay, so I'm gonna get my iron set up so that I can prepare my boning. And I always steam iron my boning, so I'm just going to pour some water in from one of the many open water bottles my daughter just be leaving in my sewing room that she doesn't finish. So that way it'll get nice and steamy. It's probably enough. Plug it in. Okay, so this is the boning that I'm gonna be using. It's plastic boning and it's covered in uh, polyester. Um, and I get this from Amazon. You can get a big roll for, I don't remember how much it costs, but I'll put the link in the description box in case you guys are interested. And I'm just gonna measure out my boning by looking at my 
pattern pieces. And I have on the pattern, I have measurements for how long you're supposed to cut the boning. Um, but I just like to measure it out myself without a ruler. So what I do is I just place the boning, I line it up with the seams, the side seams from the bodice to see how long it needs to be. And then I cut it. And I cut two times. So this is the boning for my front bodice piece. So when I put it in, it's going to go on the inside. See, perfect. So that's those pieces. And then I also take a piece from the back. So this is the back bodice piece. I literally just fold it in half. And then cut a piece of boning that is just as long going down the middle. So those are my back pieces. And And then I'm going to iron my boning. So I literally just lay it flat onto the ironing board like so. And you can hear the steam coming out. Super hot steam that's going to get this boning nice and flat. When I first started using boning, I did not know you were supposed to iron it. So it was difficult to work with because there I was trying to sew this like curled plastic into areas that were supposed to be straight. So always, always iron your boning. And look how nice and straight it is now. Um, and then the next thing I do is I will take my boning. I usually like to do this on my table so I can see the measurements. So I'll just get a piece of measuring tape. So I'll take my boning and I'll slide the plastic out by about an inch and a quarter. And then I cut it. The reason that we're cutting the boning off, see my finger for reference. The reason that we're cutting the plastic out is because you need the ends of your boning to not have plastic in it. See, once you slide it back in, you have this little piece and this little piece. And so that way we can sew our boning edges down into the garment without sewing through the plastic. Again, an inch and a quarter. Snip, snip. And that boning is now ready. So I'm just going to pin it to my pattern pieces.
All right, so that's the boning for um, these. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut all the rest of them. It's 12.16 on Sunday night. Technically, it's Monday morning, 12.16 a.m. And um, I just got finished cutting out all the boning and ironing it for the um, bodices. And I was about to start sewing the boning in. But then I decided I felt like taking a shower. So I'm going to do that. And after that, I don't know if I'm going to feel like going back to my office. <laughs> so I might just go to sleep. Um, I'm still a little bit behind, but I'm comfortably behind. I'm not overly behind. Um, I got a lot, a lot of work done uh, today and yesterday. So I'm really happy with that. And I think in general, I had a productive week.